it happened. What's that? The singularity? I wish, because then we wouldn't have to do this <laughs> podcast. Um, no, but it, it did snow. It oh, did. yeah. Yeah, we got a, a dusting is a polite term for it, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. They were wrong, though, by about 24 hours. Like, So we woke up. It was supposed to be four to six inches by Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. My kid wakes up screaming. She's so excited. She looks outside, and she's like, it snowed. And I look out there. May, maybe two inches. Maybe. Like you can well, still see the tops of the grass, and she's like, yeah. "We're going to build snowmen, and we're <laughs> going to do all this stuff." And I, I didn't feel like breaking her heart and telling her that, "Hey, there's not enough snow for that." Sure. And so, whatever, we did some sledding in the front yard, and it was great and wonderful. And mm-hmm. then we just went to bed. And then we woke up the next morning, and there were four inches of snow on the ground. Four new inches. Oh wow! Like, yeah, they, <laughs> we no, had we no idea this was like happening. That. We just kind of woke up, and my wife went, uh, "We need to shovel the drive," <laughs> and um. Yeah, I mentioned snowmen. to my wife that you guys were getting snow, and she said, that's weird. I, we're not supposed to get snow, and usually you get weather you mm-hmm. know, a day ahead of us. And um, we had some kind of family event Saturday night, but I, you know, I, I stepped outside a couple times because there was a chance it was going to snow Yep, 9 or 10 at night, whatever it was. And it didn't, you know. So we went to bed, and it snowed overnight, but it was just nothing. And like the kid mm-hmm. kind of catty corner to us is out there in her little snowsuit with her dog trying to play in the snow, and it's like, you could have dropped more, you know, salt flakes or like laundry soap on the ground than than was than we saw in actual snow. But yeah, it happens. Yeah. So I just played outside all weekend, which wasn't a bad thing. And um, yeah, yeah. How was your weekend? Sounds like it was uneventful. Didn't involve hue lights in any capacity. Um, there is a minor hue light note. I, okay. I I mentioned my belief that the garage light has something to do with screwing up other lights and, and mm-hmm. uh, that could still be the case but um, I have now witnessed two uh, occurrences where the lights in both the living room and the sunroom revert to green and red like for Christmas mm-hmm. and I now I can't explain it my daughter believes we have a ghost and that our house is haunted um, that's about just as plausible as anything I can come up with but I don't know yeah, it's kind of a weird problem. It's uh, do, I guess the thing here is is now, do I want to go to the time and effort of trying to solve this? And the answer is no, but I'm probably going to anyway. Yeah, it's 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 going to happen with you driving to the hardware store and buying some cheap lights and never yeah, having exactly the, the screw. Well, we have the old ones we can just replace, but I, we have. I mean, I don't know what that adds up to. I mean, we have a dozen ish. Hue lights now. I mean, it's yeah. a sizable investment. Yes. Yeah. This is the the quandary of the day, right? It's. I would. I would yeah. love to have smart switches instead of smart lights. And it's. Do I rip it all out and replace it and just whatever? Probably not. But um, the reason I went on the with smart lights is just that they're colored, right? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Like they have yeah. colors. Uh, so, I the smart switch versus smart light thing is an interesting debate. Otherwise, but. Um, why not both and just spend all your money? I mean, that's that's the real answer. Well, based on the budget discussion I had with my wife, we actually spent more than all of our money. So, <laughs> um, you know, that, that's its own little quandary, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of spending money, if people want to spend their money to go to build next year, uh, according to the terms and services of a giveaway, it looks like it's going to be, if I could pull it up here, uh, May 7th through the 9th in Seattle. And what it was is there's a hackathon, and the grand prize of the hackathon says, hey, here's free tickets to build May 7th through the 9th. So, yeah. Um, it, maybe able to speak at build, right? Isn't that part of it? Uh, maybe. I, I, so. didn't, I didn't read that far. I just saw that the giveaway included May 7th through the 9th, and it was like, hey, that, those are the dates, unless they decide to change them, in which case their terms and conditions of the legally binding contract is incorrect. Yeah. And this maps closely to what we had heard. We yeah. were told uh, on the side that it would be the first week of May. So that's yeah. kind of the second week of May, yeah, but it's, a, it's close. It's a, it's a whatever. And then my good friend Ralph, who works on the Surface team, if you follow him on Instagram, <laughs> he posted this up for a little Monday morning happiness. This is a prototype of the first Surface book, and this is them like working on the muscle, muscle, ugh, muscle wire. Mm-hmm. And um, fortunately, when they finally shipped it, they didn't include a 9-volt battery embedded in the display. But, yeah, know. I was gonna. What is that all about? <laughs> I think What's it's the... it's just so they can get power to the the button oh, that actually actuates yeah. the yeah. muscle wire down here, and so they had to put the battery somewhere. And 
well, you know, there you go. That's you know, I, I find this um, prototype to be interesting, um, not for the obvious reason, uh, and that is that I've always sort of believed that with Surface Book, the intention was mm-hmm. to create a clamshell laptop yep. that you opened and then you would pull off the screen and it would be like a tablet. Mm-hmm. And th- there are certain advantages to that design. We know of <laughs> certain disadvantages as well. Yeah. Uh, but Come whatever. On. It's an interesting idea. But what I mean by that is that it would like lay flat like a laptop does and it would open up. You know, mm-hmm. like I, and I always said, I, in fact, I almost got Stevie to come out and, and outright admit it until a PR person pulled him away. But I said, I said, come on, you, you didn't want that giant hole in the thing when, the, when it's closed. Obviously the intention is to close that thing over time. And he said, yeah, definitely. And he started talking and someone grabbed him and said, nope, we're out of here. And, um, so I've always, you know, just sort of believed that. I mean, sure. that that was the point. But if you look at that prototype, the, the bottom, you can't really see that. Unfortunately, I, I right over Brad's shoulder. I'm pointing at the screen like people can see my finger. That's classic. Yeah. But you can see like the curve mm-hmm. of the bottom base, right? Yeah. Which, um, I can't, it, it, it's, uh, you're looking for a, yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's there, right? That, that, that curve is there in the final product. And when yeah. you think about it, the, you know, it makes sense because the, the tablet part that you pull off the clipboard, I think they call it is is a tablet it's not going to have any curved parts to it you know right. it's going to be straight um so now i don't now i don't know what to think <laughs> you yeah. know did they really intend for the base to have this kind of weird curve to it and then you know never close that hole or was this somehow what they came up for, with for a prototype and did, did this lead to them not really looking into that too yeah. much I maybe they said hey it's different yeah it is different that's for sure that's for sure and speaking of things that are whatever i don't even know Uh, you got 52 weeks to get your butt off of windows 7 and that's about it otherwise you're doomed sachin adele will come to your house personally and throw eggs at your house if you don't microsoft is um starting to tell the story about how there's going to be an upgrade wave uh, because of this Mm -hmm. and um i hope they're right (laughs) but uh I don't think it's going to happen, and I, I've I've sort of said that for a while. I, like my story on this has always been, uh, I've been told multiple times by multiple people, uh, and I, I mean at PC makers and at Microsoft, uh, that this will be the smallest of the bumps that they've seen in recent mm-hmm. years. You know, for OS upgrades, and um, it, but it's not just that. You know, if you look back to the last time this happened, because we do have a precedent for this with Windows XP. Again, several hundred million people still using this aging OS. They let this thing ride for 12 years before they finally pulled support on it. You and I both know that they secretly provided support for it after yeah. that. Like the UK medical thing happened and five years later they still provided patches for Windows XP. I mean they had to. Um, a lot of people just didn't go. you know. <laughs> and so a year, two, three years, whatever, after XP expired, XP support, you'd still see it out in the world. People would take pictures like mm-hmm. this, someone else using Windows XP. Uh, vir- antivirus makers pledged to support the system for you know to support those customers. Microsoft said they would not, and because this just happened, you can look at the PC sales charts over the past several years and see that the year that Windows XP um, retired, there was a tiny well, there was a slowdown. It, it, the sales still fell. There was a slowdown, and then the pace picked the slowdown picked up again the next year. So there was like a, a modest impact on PC sales, not enough to trigger growth, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then when you think about uh, 2020 in this case, or like let's say 2019, and the difference between today and say five years ago, um, there is one other big difference, and that's that there are viable alternatives to Windows now that aren't expensive, like the Mac, or aren't on the fringe, like Linux. Yeah, and I think the biggest one of those is obviously Chromebook, and mm-hmm. I, I get a lot of a lot of pushback on the Chromebook thing because people don't see them when they're commuting to work or on a plane or something. But you know that kind of anecdotal information is it's not uh, proof of anything. It just means you didn't see it. You know, um, right. there's a lot of evidence of Chromebook uh, growth, and, and in fact, last year Chromebook sales grew eight percent, while the rest of the industry fell one percent. So. If Chromebooks weren't around, the rest of the industry would have fallen more than 1%. I mean, they're the only reason mm-hmm. we almost grew. Um, I think you could make the argument that Windows 7 expiring is as much an opportunity for Chromebook as it is for Windows 10. 
right? For the consumer, um, definitely. I, I would struggle to see that like an enterprise roll out Chromebooks, but well, see, actually, that might happen too. By the way, so hmm. I don't remember the exact quarter, but um, sometime in the past year, hmm. there was a quarter of either flat growth or like minor growth in the PC industry, and either Gartner or IDC attributed it one hundred percent to Chromebooks in business, um, and basically said that if this hadn't happened, there would have been no growth in the PC market. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's definitely a call out there for something that's simple, easily manageable, yeah. secure, you yeah. know, um, Microsoft talks about like first line workers, the, the type of people who would be most, who would most benefit from this kind of thing in the mm -hmm. workplace, I would say. I don't know. It's just something to, it, it, it's going to be an interesting year. So obviously this is something we'll all be watching. Yeah. That's why Microsoft's launching whatever windows lights is going to end up be called. It's going to be their third attempt at windows RT and, um, yeah, windows Chrome. Yeah, well, that's what they should call it. <laughs> wow, that would be. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I would. I can't imagine they'd just call it Edge, Edge OS, or something. But do you feel like the Edge name is kind of tainted at this point? It's not. It's not a home run. Let's just put it yeah. that way. It's not a home. Well, run. Well, that's the thing. I mean, so for <laughs> like anyone who hears this name, it either means nothing, mm -hmm. or it has a negative connotation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's not great. Yeah, it's. If they call it Internet Explorer OS, I will drink a bottle of bourbon live on Fridays on a podcast. Right. So, I don't know. CES is over. The Detroit okay. Auto Show is this week. Uh, there are, or what is it? It's called the North American International Auto Show. I'm actually... Because mm -hmm. it goes on tour, actually, right? Yeah, it does. But I think today is like the first yeah, the big opening. one. Yep. So, I'll be curious to see if there's any new vehiculars coming out that pique the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Supra looks interesting. Yeah, it leaked all over the place, just like any mm -hmm. good, any good product. <laughs> any good product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is Monday, folks. Paul, you got anything else for this Monday? Yeah, I just want to wrap up the giveaway thing. Um, I have now heard from everyone except for one guy who won one of the sweaters, so I'll probably ping him again. Um, you know, congratulations to everyone who won, and thank you again to Microsoft and Chris Capasola for doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, I will attempt to ship those out this week. I'm going to, I'm going to take one of each to probably FedEx in the post office and just sort of see what the costs look like. And, and I want to, I want to box them all similarly. So sure. I think I'm going to buy boxes from one of those places yep. that fit them, you know, and then I bubble wrap and stuff. Um, the rationale there is I don't want to just do like a handmade wrap job with different size boxes and then have one of them explode somewhere over Toledo or something. Um, so anyway, that will take a couple of days. Um, but I, uh, my goal is to get that done by the end of the week. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, it is, um, the contest part is over. We did have thousands of entries. Um, yes. Thank, I'm very happy this is over because the spam filters were, I know, we're straining at the seams. Yeah. Well, as Tim pointed out, I, well, so, you know, just I, Brad knows this, but I mean, like, I just kind of agreed to do this. I didn't really alert work or anything or even ask work or, whatever. And then, you know, all the, like obviously we do this contest and all of a sudden it's like, what's going wrong with the site? You know? Um, yeah. I, I, Tim said to me and to you, uh, Brad, that, um, <laughs> you know, it's like when, when, when you see someone posting the same thing over and over again, it kind of, it kind of looks like spam. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. It's like, like we were just attacked earlier last year, I guess, um, using a method that looked a little bit like this, you know? And, um, yeah, I guess I, uh, I, I said to Tim, I, that might have been private, but I had said to Tim, it's kind of like Homer Simpson testing to see if the electric, electricity is live, you know, and yeah. he keeps zapping himself. And he's like, well, I'm going to say, I, I know I got zapped twice, but I got to try a third time. You got to make sure. Um, you really yeah. do. Yeah. So the electricity was live. Um, but it's over. So, you know, now it's just the effort of uh, doing the boxing and stuff. So it will happen yep. eventually. Yes, it will. Oh. Sooner or later. All right, folks, so that wraps it up for this Monday. We'll be back tomorrow to figure out what else is going on with our lives and our Internet-connected thingies. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful day, and we'll catch you tomorrow.